Hello. In this video, we'll talk about the Sententiae in Chapter 12 of Wheelock's Latin. And this chapter, Chapter 12, is all about perfect verbs. And so we get a bunch of Sententiae with perfect verbs. So if you went to Sunday school, you'll recognize the first Sententia easily. So let's go to number two. In triumphal. Well, where's the verb? We don't want to start with this quote here. We'll leave that for later. We need to look here, actually, before the colon. As it turns out, the verb is glossed, praetulit, which is uh, from praefero, or fere, which is to carry, but with that, uh, with this prefix means to display. And with that ending, we're looking for a he, she, or it, this ending here. And here the he is Caesar, of course clearly in the nominative. Now, in triumpho is fairly clear, but we should, we should clarify that a triumph in Rome was a, a particular event. Really, we're talking about a parade in which a triumphant general returns to Rome with all the booty, prisoners, soon to be slaves, and marches through Rome. It was a huge party. The thing is, uh, a real triumph had to be over foreign enemies. Romans fought plenty of civil wars, but if you defeated other Romans in battle, uh, that's not quite so cool as killing a bunch of barbarians. So Romans didn't want to celebrate a triumph in those situations, and later in the empire, triumphs were reserved mostly for emperors, because if a mere general won a victory and got a triumph, then, well, he might get some popular support, and people might start to wonder why the general had done all the fighting, and where was the emperor when the fight was going on? This general seems like he knows how to get things done. Maybe he should be emperor, you know? So triumphs, that is, the procession and the party, got to be pretty rare in later Roman history. Anyway, in triumph, that is, in the triumphal procession, actually, maybe we should say in the triumph, then. Caesar displayed... And now we get hunc titulum, masculine and accusative, and singular, of course. This, and titulum, well, it's title, of course, but it's gloss as placard, so let's go with that. This placard. And now we have the famous statement, wani, weedy, wiki. These are all present perfect verbs in the first person. I came, venire. I guess I need to put this in quotes. I saw, videre, I conquered, winkery. So, in the triumph, Caesar displayed this placard. I came, I saw, I conquered. Let's go to number four. And, and this is one of those sententia that always makes me laugh a little, because it's kind of obvious. Adolescents wilt do vivere, cynics do wixit. So I think Wheelock has, has wilt glossed for us. That's the first verb we want to look at. Somebody wants to. Or wishes to. Well, to do what? Vivere. To live. Do a long time. Well, who wants to live a long time? Adolescents. Let's say a young man. A youth. Yeah, let's go with a youth. A youth wants to live a long time. Senex. Old man. So, kind of the opposite, the, the contrast to adolescents. So, an old man. Wixit. This is the perfect of Wivre. Has lived. A long time. Ah, Cicero, I hope you didn't have to think too long about that one. Well, to be fair, this is probably condensed such that it just kind of sounds silly by being condensed by Wheelock. So, on to number five. Non ille du wixit sed du fuit. Ah, I like this one, too. It's funny in a bitter way, and it offers a chance to show a somewhat alternative definition of essay. 
So let's split this into two at the comma. So what's the verb before the comma? Well, let's wix it again. This is the perfect form of wibbure, like we saw in the last sententia. And of course, with this ending, we're looking for a he, she, or it. And here it is, ile. Masculine, singular, nominative. So that guy. That guy, that man, did not live, right, wix it, long, or for a long time said, but, and then we get fuit. This is the perfect active form of essay, so, but, well, he was for a long time? That sounds a little funny. So we'll want to ask, I mean, because in English we'll hear he was for a long time, and we'll ask, was what? So it's probably better to translate essay here, or fu, I guess I should say fuit, as existed. He existed for a long time. Yeah, that's kind of a clever dig. Number seven. Sophocles ad sumam senectutem tragurius fecit. So we all know who Sophocles was. Uh, if, well, maybe, maybe not. If not, he was an ancient Greek playwright, uh, a tragedian. His most famous tragedies are from the Oedipus cycle, you know, Oedipus Rex, in which the hero unwittingly kills his father, marries his mother, and then when he finds out about it, sticks needles into his eyes. Then there's Antigone, Oedipus at Colonus. In fact, the sentence is a reference to that last tragedy, Oedipus at Colonus. We'll see how. Well, Oedipus at Colonus, it was the last play he wrote, I believe. So this is the verb. Fecit. And this is the perfect of facio, facire. Right, to do or to make. So somebody, well, well, okay, it's Sophocles. Somebody made something. So, but we know it's Sophocles already. So Sophocles made, made what? Well, now we have a few accusatives to work out. We have ad suum senectutum, that's in the accusative. And then we have tragurias. That's in the accusative, too. But they don't go together, of course, because this is singular, senectutum, and this is plural, tragurdias. So we have to decide which one's which. What's the direct object, and what's the other one? Well, here we have ad, which is a preposition that always takes the accusative. So that explains sumum senectutum. Sophocles made up to old age, or may I ask both up to old age, into, well, actually I should say up to Extreme, I forgot about the sumum. Up to extreme old age, or the height of old age, what did he do? What did he make? He made tragedies. Tragedias. Now, the way this is phrased makes it sound like he was some sort of crazy hitman or a homewrecker. Uh, we should understand fecit maybe here as scripsit. We could maybe write that in there. That is, he, he wrote tragedies. He was a playwright. Okay, number nine. Reges Romam a principio habuerant libertatem lucius brutus Romanus dedit. So we have two parts here divided by a semicolon. Let's start before that. The verb? Well, it's habuerant. This is clearly plural, so we're looking for a they subject. Who are they? Well, the plural here is clearly reges. Kings. So kings... And now we should think maybe about the uh, the tense of this verb. This is this is uh, perfect. So kings had kings had what? Well, Rome. That's clearly the, the accusative. Kings had Rome a principio from the beginning, or maybe we should say at the beginning. That's from or at whatever we want here. The beginning. Semicolon. Now the next part. The verb is dated. Note the reduplication here. This is do dare. And then dedi. You get that the first syllable re, uh, reproduced, reduplicated. Or here we're looking for a he, she, or it subject, of course, because we have a T at the end. And it is, that subject is Lucius Brutus. So what did Lucius Brutus give? Well, he gave liberty. To whom? To Romans. So, 
we'll just call them LB, gave liberty or freedom to Romans or to the Romans, I guess we should say. So what's this all about? Well, Lucius Brutus was a kinsman of Lucretia, whom Sextus Tarquin had raped, and then she killed herself, if you remember of that. And since he had led the revolt against the Tarquins, he was one of the first consuls of Rome. He was kind of a George Washington figure for Romans. Though, come to think of it, early Americans associated Washington with a different figure of the Roman Republic, Cincinnatus. That's how Cincinnati is actually named in honor of Washington, even though it's not called Washington. And finally, number 11. Quando libertas cecidirit, nemo libere dicere audibit. I wanted to include this one because, well, let's look. Before the comma, the verb here is cecidirit. Again, we have reduplication, so clearly this is perfect. But then we have this form that kind of looks like sum in the future here, right? Add it. That's because this is future perfect. It's a form of caro. Carare. Well, it's the perfect form, I should have said. To fall. So, quando? When? Liberty in the future. In the nominative, when liberty, then kekidarit, perfect future, will have fallen, comma, nemo, nobody. And then we have out a bit. Do you remember audio, audere? To dare? Well, this is clearly the future bit here, right? And if you remember, the perfect is always relative to some point in time, be it the present, the past, or in this case, the future. That's why it's future perfect. Anyway, nobody will dare to dicere, speak, and then we have an adverb, libere, freely. Okay, work on the others on your own, and we'll see you in conferencing.